Today, we're gonna to take a trip down memory lane and take a look at AOL Prog UI design. Oh, and hey, I'd like to point out this video's awesome sponsor, Skillshare.com, which offers thousands of classes in design, coding, business, and more. For instance, you're about to watch a train wreck of UI UX examples, but you could avoid being a train wreck yourself by watching this course at Skillshare. Now, Skillshare is just 10 bucks a month, but if you're the first 200 students to use my very exclusive link below in the description here in YouTube, then you get the first two months free. All right, so let's get started. Hey everyone, what's up? Gary Simon of Corsetro. So if you're in age range of like 30 to 40 plus years old and you use the internet when you were a teenager, then chances are you probably used uh, AOL and you connected to the internet through dial up. And back then, if you were interested in computers and you were a computer nerd and you wanna learn how to, to code and build things, then you probably got into the AOL prog scene or the progies. Uh, this was what programs or software were referred to as and their purpose was really just, I. Uh, nothing positive really came out of it. There were chat room scrollers to annoy the hell out of people. Uh, you could punt or kick people off by freezing the, the, the AOL software. And many times they had to just restart their computer. Uh, the screen names were harvested and people would use these mailers to spam mass amounts of porn uh, in order to make money. And, and, and a lot of people actually did make a ton of money doing that. Uh, but the purpose of this video is I wanted to take a look at the UI design specifically of these apps and see, you know, it, what separated them um, from each other in terms of what made them good designs versus horrible designs. And trust me, we're going to see plenty of horrible designs. And if there's anything that we can take away uh, from what was being practiced back then and transition it to today. All right, so answer today's question, which is when did you first start using the internet? And maybe talk about how you connected. Was it dial up? Was it through AOL, et cetera? Let me know in the comments. I will let you know in the first pinned comment uh, my answer to that question. Make sure you subscribe and let's get started. All right, so for this first section, we're gonna take a look at splash screens. Now, splash screens were very popular um, back in the early days, uh, the late 90s, early 2000s on both uh, amateur software developers and also uh, websites. Uh, in order to get to the main user interface of a website, you would first have to, have to click through on a splash screen. Unfortunately, we really don't see that anymore. Um, and you know, based on the resolutions uh, of the monitors back then, a lot of the examples I'm gonna show you look very small on a 2K or 4K monitor right here. So I'm gonna try to zoom up on some of these, but this is the first splash screen I'm gonna check, take a look at. And we can see just um, all that was wrong with the late 90s design is almost pretty much present here. And we can see that we have just bevels everywhere. It's, it's added on uh, a border around this, this container. It's added on the type. I, and that's something that we see just a lot in different examples. People tried to get unique about it and just outer glows everywhere. So when I see outer glows um, in, in these bevels, it just, it always takes me back to my teen years. And lightning strikes and lightning bolts were very popular back then. You're going to see this a lot in, in these splash designs and also in the UI designs themselves in the backgrounds. And that's because Photoshop back in the day had plugins that you could add that would generate lightning bolts. And everyone just thought that was awesome. More crazy bevels. I'm so glad we don't see these anymore. AOL was one of the biggest uh, AOL progs back in the day that people used. I don't know what's happening there. More lightning bolts and outer glows and even bevels applied to the uh, text right here. <laughs> so bad. Oh, we can see the uh, call to action click button right here. Oh, more strange lightning bolts. I mean, just... This was this was what it was like back then, though. I, I, I back then there was primitive 3D apps that you could use to create simple scenes. I think that's what we're seeing here. Just overall, really bad uh, design. Another 3D scene. I don't know which app would have been used to create something like this. Fate Ultra, Magus in fungi are two of the most popular 
uh, AOL developers. Uh, let's go on to a next section where we're going to take a look at backgrounds in how uh, some of these coders just completely destroyed the user interface by backgrounds. And, and I still see this today uh, when it comes to web design and people using backgrounds like in an improper form on their designs. So here's the first one we'll take a look at. The lens flare. Uh, lens flare was what really defined Photoshop and, and everybody was using lens flares uh, for their projects, at least some at one point in time uh, back in the day. Fortunately, that's gone by the wayside, even though Photoshop still gives you the option and the ability to create lens flares. Fortunately, I have not seen one yet when I do the design reviews. See the background here contrasting with the elements on the top. We still see this today. These are horrendously ugly, I, I know, trust me. But that's what we had to work with. If we had an app or a probe that we really wanted to use and maybe perhaps it was coded well, we would have to suffer with some of this really bad UI design. And just look at this, it's just every, there, there's no structure in the layout at all. We have a, a, a city in the background for the app itself. More lightning strikes. Yep, more lightning bolts on the previ previous example. I think that's what that is. I mean, these are just really, 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 really bad. <laughs> oh, man. I mean, this is what happens when non-designers try to design something. Also take a look at examples of effects that were commonly applied to UI elements themselves. Uh, so the bevel, the bevels all over the place. I uh, and also outer glows. Saw that very commonly. More bevels on these elements. Drop shadows used improperly with strange colors and bad contrast. Button bevels were huge. It made people think that you know it's it's a it's a it's a literal button that people can, can click on, and that's something I myself even did I uh, way 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 long time ago. More bevels and such. You can't even read the text. Illegal chat buster. More bevels and a strange background. As you can see back then, I, you know, we didn't have a lot of screen real estate, but back on you know, the old school CRT monitors, which we had, uh, I forget what the resolutions were. It's like 640 by 480 or something like that. These actually did appear larger on those uh, screens. Wow. I mean, just look at this. And I still see people doing these things today, maybe not in such a bad manner, um, but people definitely, if you're a, you're a new designer, they try to add effects on the elements unnecessarily. And really that was that was kind of helped out by the, the, the movement of flat design, uh, the flat UI design trend, uh, which I think is largely still stuck around. Uh, in the next section, we're going to take a look at just a few examples of white space and how white space really was not a thing back in the day. Not many people used white space uh, effectively. So as you can see, this actually isn't a terrible example, but as we can see on the outside of the, each container, whether it be the buttons or this uh, the, this list section right here, um, there's absolutely zero white space, but we have all these little containers and borders, so it really just kind of clutters things up. Again, zero white space on the outside of containers. We could also see <laughs> Very minimum white space utilized here and in other areas between the design and the buttons. Wow. Wow. 
no white space whatsoever. And then finally, we're going to conclude this by taking a look at what I consider to be good designs for that time. Uh, based on these apps that were created. So this one is actually not bad. Um, this is probably made in the early 2000s. Uh, just, just judging by the aesthetics of this. Um, one thing that was real po popular back then was subtle gradients going from you know a light color to maybe white. And I can see this happening here. But uh, everything else in terms of white space and, and padding. The only thing that's bad is this, these call to action buttons that are really tiny. It doesn't make sense to make them circles. But nonetheless, contrasting them, comparing them to the other ones, a thousand times better. This one, uh, again, it's, it's real simple. I don't like the white background, but still, they're not using crazy backgrounds or anything. This one is more consistent with what you know professional apps actually looked like uh, in a Windows settings back in the day just using the default background color for apps and executables, um, using a, a intelligently using uh, tabs here to get through the different areas of the app itself. Um, just looks a thousand times better and more professional and, and that's the one takeaway that we can take away from this little video, uh, which I'll get to in a second, is you know don't reinvent the wheel. This one, a little bit too small. Things are a little bit pushed together, but at least it's consistent looking. I d wouldn't agree with the, uh, th there still is a bevel applied to pretty much all the type elements, but still, it's actually not that bad. This one is definitely a lot, lot better. Although it doesn't make sense to put a new password in the current password up there. So these are a lot better than those other examples. See, this one does use a background, but it's a pattern-based background, so it's not that bad. Same thing with this. So even though the designs that we just took a look at were from 20 plus years ago, the things that separated them from being good versus bad are still the same things that separate modern designs from being good versus bad. And that is having a solid understanding of the core design fundamentals, such as understanding and using properly applying color and contrast, scale, white space, simplicity versus complexity, etc. All right, so I just thought it'd be interesting to take a trip down memory lane and look at those. My God, I'm 35 years old already. This is horrible. Um, but make sure you answer today's question anyhow, which is when did you first start using the internet? Maybe talk about you know how you connected. Was it dial-up? Did you use something like AOL or something else? Let me know in the comments. I'll let you know in the first pinned comment. Make sure you subscribe, and I'll see you later. Goodbye.